Let's hear it for Rafe Perlman. I heard that song for the first time when I was walking on the Camino on that pilgrimage, so it's a special song. So today is about blessing, and in many religious and spiritual traditions across time and all cultures, there has always been a ritual of blessing, whether it's a blessing from the priest or the pope or a rabbi or clergy or a swami or other spiritual uh, sadhu or aspirant. The truth is that we are all divine beings, and as such, we each have the power to bless. So we don't need to go to a higher up somewhere to get a blessing because we have that power within us to bless each other and to bless ourselves. And the definition of blessing means an act or words of one that blesses, so to confer good upon. Now, blessing... The word blessing I don't think is like superficial or Pollyannish. It can be like blessings, you know, blessings to you all. I think that a a, a true blessing comes from an authentic and deep place within, within ourselves. So it's traditional then for pilgrims to receive a blessing on the beginning of their journeys. Um... Seattle Unity is embarking on a pilgrimage, and so today we're going to invoke blessings. We're going to invoke blessings not just on this journey for for where we're going as a community, but we're invoking blessings on our bodies and on our lives and on our own inner pilgrimage. In Psalm 23, we read, Thou anointest my head with oil, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So just in hearing those words, we hear the power of blessing. So um, when I was at the ashram in January, before the 10-day fast, there was a blessing that took place. And uh, every person uh, received a blessing. And then at the end, there was a blessing as well. And part of what was happening there was, you know, you sign up for something, you, you, you do something, you enter into something, and you're like going on your own willpower in a sense, like I'm going to do this. And so we were joining together on a 10-day fast, and as a result um, of having a blessing, it was like it was, we were getting help, right? It's like when you, when you turn it over to God and for a blessing, it's like it lifted it to a higher purpose. It lifted it. And, and I felt lifted, even though, believe it or not, I missed that ritual because I was late. But the rest of the group did it. <laughs> and I could feel the energy of the group and I could feel the energy that they were being carried by this experience because it brought to it kind of a higher purpose than what we were just doing. So... Um, So again, when we think of blessing, we may think of someone who is trained, but every single one of us has that presence. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, we read, See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commands of the Lord, your God, that I am giving you today, The curse, if you disobey the commands of the Lord and your God and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods which you have not known. So there's a few ways to look at this story. The first is historical, right? Because you're like, ah! Um, (laughs) And part of what was happening here was the Hebrew people were, 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 were opening to the one God and turning away from the household gods and all the many different gods and goddesses that existed to go to Yahweh or Jehovah, if you will, to the one God. So that's one level of it. The other level when you hear this uh, scripture is maybe you get the picture of the old man in the sky who's watching you, and if you disobey him, he's going he's gonna to curse you and you're going to be in trouble. That's another way to look at it. And then if we look at it from a unity perspective, you know, it's like, okay, so which, which are we going to choose today? Are we going to choose a blessing or are we going to uh, uh, choose a curse? And it's not, and, and what happens metaphysically when we, we disobey God is we're disobeying our own guidance, are we not? We're disobeying our own hearts. We're disobeying uh, the golden rule, if you will. Um, and, um, and to follow 
spirit and be blessed is again, is to follow our guidance, is to follow our hearts, is to follow the golden rule, to, to recognize that, that, that every action we take can, can bless, can be for good. And the gods, you know, we, from Unity's perspective, the other gods, I mean, do we not put other gods before God? We put money, you know, we put all these other things in front of, in front of the presence and our experience with spirit. So which shall it be today? Shall it be a blessing or a curse? Because we have a choice. So here's a question. Do you curse the other drivers when you're out on the road or do you bless them? <laughs> do you curse other people with gossip or do you bless them? Do we curse our bodies when they're not well or we have an injury? Do we curse our bodies or do we bless them? And probably most importantly, do you curse yourself with, with uh, negative uh, thoughts and condemn, condemnation um, within, or do you bless yourself? So it's important that we watch how we talk to ourselves, watch how you talk to your body, watch how you talk to your child, watch how you talk to your friends and your family, watch how you talk to your dog, right? So my little dog, Hazel, who's now seven months old, just graduated from puppy school, puppy preschool this week. And um, basically, really, what is dog training? It's the, it's the teacher teaching the humans how to be a, a, a dog, you know, to, to deal with your dog. And all of it is positive reinforcement. And not just word positive reinforcement, but you always have to have a little treat in your hand, you know, that you know, you're, you're sort of encouraging them to come forward. And the teacher said, when you call your dog, you want your dog to come to you like they're coming to a party. It's like, oh yeah, it's you calling me. Yes, I certainly want to be there. So um, we've been working with that. And one of the things that we've also worked with is uh, she ha we have these bells that we put on the doorknob so that if she has to go outside, if she has to go potty, she can ring the bells. So, you know, we get on the floor and I ring them with her and every time we open the door, I ring the bells. And then, of course, there was the first day where she rang the bells on her own and it was like, yes! And so she's ringing the bells and it's like, oh, this is, this is great. And then I'm in the living room, I'm working and I hear the bells and I run to the bells and she doesn't have to go anywhere. She just wants me to come because she knows... <laughs> <laughs> she knows if she rings the bells, a human will show up within, within 30 seconds, a human will show up. And um, it's so interesting because I think I'm training the dog, but the dog is actually training me to show up. It's all backwards. <laughs> We've been in a writing class for the last three weeks. Our, our last one is this week. And the practice that we're doing is based on uh, Natalie Goldberg's book, uh, Writing Down the Bones, where you just write and you don't question what you're writing. You just do it. You go for, you don't try to stay at a superficial level. If something is painful, you go for it. You don't, you don't hide from it. And one of our rules, too, is that we're free to write the worst junk in the world because then that frees us up. And one of the things that that I know that I have discovered about writing is that if I can just keep going, then I can stop the curse. I can stop the editor from blocking me from writing. And so that's the practice that we've been engaging in in the last three weeks, is just to keep going and not listen to that curse or that editor that's saying, this isn't any good, what are you doing? This is stupid, right? And I know that for me, I go through this process when I write a sermon. It's like I have to be able to just keep writing and then I can turn it over the e to the editor and the editor can rip it to shreds. And that's fine because there's something there. But have you ever been stopped from a creative project or, or an idea that you have because all of a sudden these thoughts come to you, not blessings, but curses that come to you to stop you before you even get started? And what about the body? You know, I've already spoken about that a little bit, but how do you treat your body, particularly when it's not operating at its full uh, capacity, right? So for, I, I had a frozen shoulder for many years, and I just refer to it as my bad shoulder, right? Well, it's not bad. It's not a bad shoulder. It's, it's, it's injured. And, and so it's important 
that we learn how to talk to our bodies. A woman by the name of Laura Harvey said, rather than l lament any weaknesses or sicknesses, praise the troubled spots for the health they exhibit. When we bless our bodies, we raise our thoughts right out of unhealthiness into an experience of well-being, and our minds, our bodies, and spirits thrive with praise. So this, of course, is nothing new, particularly in unity, because in unity's history and in unity's lore, and I know many of you have heard this story a million times, but you know what? It's a part of our history and it's a part of our lore. And that is our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore, had tuberculosis. And she was told that, yeah, she's just going to inherit it, and that's just the way it is. And she heard a lecture by E.B. Weeks, and he said, you're a child of God, and you don't inherit illness. And that sort of woke something up in her, where she was like, huh, so if I'm a child of God, then that means I'm this divine being. I'm a spirit, and I'm a soul. And because I'm a spirit and a soul, I'm, I'm stronger, and I can connect with that more than any illness that I have. And so what she did is she basically closed herself off into her room and she talked and praised her body every day. So she apologized to it for uh, speaking, for cursing it, for speaking negatively. And then she gave thanks and she blessed each part of her body. And she, she didn't do this once. She did it for, for quite a while. She just went through, it was like her morning meditation. She would, she would bless every part of her body. And if you read, um, I think it's The History of New Thought by Neil Vali, he goes into great detail about how she did this process. It's in that book. But she healed herself. So she heals herself from tuberculosis. And the thing is that when we step up to something like this. It's not just ourselves who benefit, you know? It's like Jesus said, you know, when, when I'm lifted, when one is lifted up, all are lifted up. And so that's where the seeds of the unity movement were also planted. Because she had this healing, she was so passionate about it that she started to have prayer circles in her house prayer and healing circles. And so they would come together at 11 o'clock every day and they would pray and they would uh, bless with affirmative words. And, and that grew into the unity movement that we have today. So our movement is founded on prayer and it is founded on healing. So today we're going to, I'm going to ask you to, to bless to bless your inner pilgrim journey, to bless this journey that we're on here together, um, to collectively bless this journey by blessing our hands and our feet, our heart, our throat, and our crown chakra. And you have been given little, tiny, little, tiny, tiny little vials of oil. And if somebody does not have them, then I need you to raise your hand because the ushers can come around and bring you one. And if you're with other people, you can share that. So just keep your hand up till the ushers find you. So this is a grapeseed oil and it's unscented. So no allergies, right? It shouldn't affect anybody's allergies. And while you're holding it, I'm, we're gonna move into that uh, blessing soon with the help of Rafe, but we need to bless this oil. So I'm gonna do that now and then I'm gonna continue on with the talk, but just take a moment to hold this oil in your hand. And I invite you to infuse it with the power of blessing that you are. Feel it in your hands. Take a deep breath and breathe into your hands and into the oil and just imagine that it is infused with light and with healing energy. and you can bring your awareness back. So as we go about and bless the body and bless our journey, I was really touched by the scripture that was, uh, that's found in 1 Corinthians by Paul, where he speaks about um, the different parts of the body and how the different parts of the body are like 
a community, right? That we're all different. Some of us are stronger and weaker and funnier and whatever, and, but we need it all. It doesn't matter, we need it all. Um, so I just wanna share this with you. Even so, the body is not made up of one, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. It would, not, it would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, well, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, then where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, well, then where would the sense of smell be? As it is, there are many parts, but there's one body. And the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, well, I don't need you. On the contrary, these parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. So if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. You can hear him speaking then to the body of Christ, that we are the body of Christ, that we are the body of spirit, we are the body of God, and all parts are needed. I mean, if you have ever injured, I mean, one time I injured the tip of my finger, I almost got it cut off in a fan, but just the top part of it. And I'll tell you that one little part of my body, this, hurt and took so much attention. Is that not so, right? When you're, when you're fine, you're like, yeah, I'm fine. But you just have one little thing happen to one little part of the body and the whole thing is off. And so it is with community, right? Is that when, we, we, when one of us suffers, we all suffer. When we all rejoice, we rejoice together. So, we're going to uh, bless, our, again, our feet, our hands, our heart, our throat, our crown chakra, and our third eye, and I'll walk you through it. And um, so you have oil here that you can use. And, you know, if you don't want to use the oil, you can just do it with your mind, and you can just do it with your own blessing. But there's something about the physical activity of doing these things that I think is very powerful. And you don't have to take off your shoes. You can put it on the top of your shoe when we get to the feet, or just go with, with what, what it is you would like to do. So Rafe is going to teach us a refrain, because I'm going to speak, we're going to bless a part of the body, then we're going to refrain, and then keep going. So. So I invite you to focus on your feet right now. And the truth is our feet take us where we need to go and they carry us forward. Have you ever considered how far your feet have taken you? How many miles you have walked? And how many more miles you will walk with these feet? So wiggle your toes and just take a moment to thank your feet. Thank your feet. And so if you want to take the oil and bless your feet, bless your feet asking that they might carry you forward in this new season of possibilities, both personally and as a community, as we walk forward. Singing, crown us, crown us, angels come and gather us, crown us, we shall live again. Crown. <laughs> we can do no wrong. <laughs> So let's focus on our hands. I invite you just to open them right now. 
Our hands can be used to heal or hurt. Our hands are used to give, but also to receive. Our hands can hold on, or our hands can let go. Think of the many millions of tasks that you have done with your hands. How much good you've brought to the world, how much service, and how your hands have served you in this task. And so taking the oil, and putting a little tiny bit on your palms and rubbing them together, and bless your hands, asking that they might help you to give form to creative expression and thanking them. Singing, crown us, crown us, angels come and gather us. Crown us, we shall live again. And so we move to the heart. And again, before you bring the oil here, I invite you just to breathe from your heart for a moment. And as the heart is our intuitive center, the heart is the center of compassion and love and kindness. And sometimes there can be a block to our hearts if we get hurt or betrayed. So I invite you to just simply thank your heart, not only for the great work that it does in our bodies, but the love that it brings forth. And so we take the oil and bless and thank your heart, asking it to be open to compassion and kindness for yourself and others. Sing and crown us, crown us, angels come and gather us, crown us, and we shall live again. And so we focus on the throat, for this is the power of the sp spoken word that calls the world into manifestation so that we may speak our truth and speak it with truth and speak it with power. It's also how we take in food. May it be nourishing to us. So we take the oil and we thank and we bless the throat, asking that each of us gains courage to speak the truth. Sing and crown us, crown us, angels come and gather us, crown us, we shall live again. And so we move to our eyes and imagine all the things that you have seen in your lifetime, all that you have witnessed, the joy, the celebrations, the suffering, and all that you still remain to see. And as we call in the eyes, we also bring in the point between our eyebrows of faith, of the pineal gland, because when we truly see, that is open. And so may we see with the eyes of God. What is the saying that the same eye through which God sees me is the same eye that God that you see God. So bless your eyes that you may see the divinity in all beings and that your faith center may be open. Singing crown us, crown us, angels come gather us, crown us, we shall live again and before we do the crown chakra I'm going to invite you if there is any part of your body that needs special attention that needs healing 
rather than curse it, I invite you to take a moment to bless it right now with the oil. And we know that the healing power of God moves in and through us right now, bringing us healing and wholeness. And finally, we move to the crown chakra, to the very top of the head. And it is here that we are open to spirit, that we are open to God, and yet we can stay rooted in the earth. This is how we are guided to a higher power, where we experience mystical oneness. So as we put the oil on the top of our head, Bless the top of your head that you may awaken to the presence of God. May you experience mystical oneness. Sing and crown us, crown us. Angels come and gather us. Crown us and we shall live again. Sing and crown us, crown us, and angels come and gather us, crown us, we shall live again. 